Education meeting. Today is Monday, March 26, 2018. Can I have the attendance, please? Mrs. Bealey? Mrs. Durgan? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Mrs. Lyford? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Starr? Mr. Hinton? Here. Mr. Vashon? Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? There are none. Okay, moving on to new business. 6.1 is the second reading of policy IDR, instructional day regulations. Are there any public comments? Seeing none, we will move on. Do I have a motion? Well, I didn't bring my motion tonight. Okay. <laughs> you have a motion. Move, move, move. I move that oh, the move Board of Education what was the policy, please? IDR. Be amended at the second reading for the following start times. The high school and the middle school will start at 8 o'clock and K-5 at 8.50. 8.50. Second. Discussion? I can start with, um, Mary brought in, uh, sent me a statement. She's not here tonight, so I will read that for her. Um, it says, I am sorry to miss this special board meeting regarding start times. My son and daughter are both members of the swim team and their banquet is tonight. I appreciate all the emails from community members letting me know your feelings about this decision. I understand there will be those who are disappointed that the original plan is not going forward, but right now, in light of the difficulties in our town, it is not the best decision. I appreciate all hard, all hard work that our teachers, staff, and principals will do to implement this new plan if the vote goes forward. I have full faith in their ability to make it a success. I respectfully submit that I am in favor of starting the high school and middle school at 8 a.m. and the K-5 schools at 8.50. Anyone else? I just wanted, so we heard a little bit from, um, we got emails from the high school and Wentworth just detailing um, some of your staff response to having this um, compromise go through, and I just was wondering if um, you had any information from the K-2 or the middle school. So at our last meeting, I think we um, spoke about what the concerns would be, and Wentworth really was asking for the most time so they could go back and talk with their staff because the change was so drastic for their building, or it was the largest change for their building. Um, and K-2 will have no change with the 8.50 time. So I think that at, um, if I could speak for Diane, I don't think that she's here tonight. Um, at the middle school, they talked about the process and you know where we are in the second reading of that. But it wasn't the expectation that everybody would pull their staff in the way that some phase levels chose to. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I have, I have something I'd like to um, read. Um, we're voting tonight on an amendment to our school schedule policy that, may, that many have called a compromise. The word compromise has a few different meanings, and I've been thinking about those in the past several weeks. The change in the schedule is a compromise in that it continues to compromise the health of our adolescent students. It will continue to put them at higher risk of becoming obese and depressed, of relying on caffeine and unhealthy energy drinks to make it through the day, of taking risks with alcohol, nicotine, and other drugs, and they will continue to not see any of the academic benefits that would come with not being chronically sleep deprived. It's a compromise for Wentworth students and staff in that they are moving from a perfectly healthy and advantageous school start time to a time that I haven't heard any of them say that they favor. I have every reason to believe that they will make it work because that is what they do, but I would be surprised to hear any of them say that they think a start time of 8.50 will be a positive move for their students and better than their current start time or the slightly earlier time of 8 o'clock that has been, had been the plan for the past, that has been the plan for the past year. As for the K-2 schools, I'm a little confused um, by those who have been asking for this op option and calling it a compromise because their start time doesn't change at all. However, I do think it is a compromise for the students. They will continue to start at a time that is quite late for many of them to be starting their academic day. For many K-2 students, an hour of their best learning time will have already passed by. 
Some will have already transi transitioned from home to daycare and from daycare to school before starting in on what we know is an ever more rigorous elementary cu curriculum. It's a compromise for the K2 staff and principals who told us they were looking forward to this change. It's a compromise for our community, which has been preparing for 11 months now to make the switch to the start times we told them to prepare for last April. Now we're asking them to switch gears yet again. We've heard from families who are angry about this last minute change and they have every right to be frustrated. It is definitely a compromise for me. I took an oath promising to make the best decisions for students that I could, have get, that I could given the information I have. I have enough information to know that this amendment is not in the long term best interests of our students. However, as the superintendent has said, community readiness matters. As important as it is to look out for students' health and success in the long term, and as disappointing as it is to not be making this student-centered change, we also need to look at their well-being in the short term. Tonight, I will be voting to improve their learning environment in the short term. I think it's important as we vote on this amendment tonight to take a look at what we're giving up on and to reflect on a few of the points that have tripped us up. First, for those who say that they have read the research but still think it's just a matter of time management that adolescents get enough sleep, or that changing to a later start won't prepare them for the real world, respectfully, you haven't really understood the research. The research is conclusive that it's not mere merely how many hours of sleep adolescents get, but when they sleep. They get their most healthy sleep between 11 p.m. and 8 a.m. They're essentially living in a different time zone between the ages of 13 and 23 or so, and to say that letting them sleep when their biology is telling them to is coddling them is like telling parents that letting their two-year-old take an afternoon nap will make them unprepared for the real world. Adolescents are going through a period of brain development comparable to the rapid development that happens from age zero to three. They are at an extremely vulnerable period of time when they are learning how to make good decisions and how to measure risk supporting that brain development by making it possible for them to get the right amount of sleep at the right time with healthy start times is just one of the ways we can support them through this time of life, but I continue to believe it is an important measure. I've heard the argument that the science doesn't apply to us here because of our placement in the time zone and our relatively early sunrise, so I looked into that. Dr. Thomas Mello, who is a doctor right next door in Portland specializing in pediatric pulmonology and sleep medicine, got back to me about that. He said, Quote, although light has the most potent effect on the circadian rhythm, there are other factors such as environment and melatonin. The landmark study that described the problems with teenagers and school start times was done in New England. The fact that the findings of the original study in New England were duplicated across time zones suggests that there is a biologic process independent of other factors and is a function of circadian biology during the teenage years, end quote. The 8.30 a.m. or later recommendation from all the national health organizations is a bare bones minimum based on sunrise and circadian patterns in the mainland U.S. The differences between any location in the mainland U.S. are so trivial that the blanket 8.30 a.m. or later recommendation covers them all. Last fall, a Nobel Prize was awarded to three researchers who focused on understanding the molecular and genetic clocks that control the body's day-night schedule. What their studies showed was that high schools and middle schools need to have later starts. Eight o'clock is not good enough. For the elementary students, I have heard loud and clear that a 7 a.m. bus is too early. I heard a lot more concern about the timing and the length of the bus rides than I did about the 8 a.m. start time. I believe an 8 a.m. start time with shorter rides and later bus times could be supported by this community. I sincerely hope that if and when a discussion about changing the school start times comes up again, that the community and the board will work together to advocate for more transportation options and better sidewalks to make walking to school more of a possibility as it is in surrounding towns. And I hope that they will support a town and school budget to make these solutions possible. Until there is more community readiness for a change to healthier start times, I would like to see the board, school department, and community engage in discussions about other ways we can support student health and well-being. This might include taking a look at homework policies, extracurricular activities and sports, or the academic pressure our student representatives have talked about. I look forward to the Raising Healthy Teens event on the 29th as a place where our community can come together around supporting student health. Finally, I hope that as we move forward and as districts around us continue to make their own changes to healthier school start times, that Scarborough won't give up on improving start times for all phase levels. Tonight, I am voting to make a change. I hope that at some point in the future, Scarborough will make a real improvement and not just a compromise. Anyone else? I have something to add, actually. So I mentioned last at the last meeting that the toxic climate in the school community has been overwhelming and quite disturbing. And until the meeting where the compromise surf resurfaced 
7.35 or 7.45 was the only start time for the high school and middle school. But it seemed to change overnight after 8 o'clock was free proposed. From that moment on, all I've received is a nearly unanimous vote in favor of the compromise. And I just feel it's necessary that I have that we applaud each and every of the each and every student who has kind of stood up and spoke out against this because both as the representative and the president of the civil rights team, um, that that's a huge thing for a student to do and it takes a lot of courage to do that. And that's that's all. Thanks, thank you. I'll just say I, I I'm not going to go through all my three pages of notes about why I think the compromise is a good idea. Again, all those reasons um, still stand for me. But um, I do want to, uh, again, apologize for the fact that we're doing this. I wish we could have done it sooner because I know a lot of people have made plans and now um, they're going to have to change those plans or redo their plans. And I'm sorry for that. Um, so, and I hope that, and I know the schools are going to have to also re readjust a little bit. Um, but I hope that the five months that we have left until the beginning of the new school year is long enough for people to be able to readjust. Five months? Is that right? You guys all set? Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just say a couple things. Um, I, too, will support the amended times discussed at our last meeting. Um, I don't think they go far enough uh, for the high school kids. Um, I, too, agree with the 8.30 start time, and I think... Um, I also don't think that 8 o'clock is too early for the primary kids. So um, what the conclusion I came to was that we have a transportation issue. And so between the transportation issue and the toxic environment in this town, which I feel is worse for kids than the compromise, um, so I will vote for the 8 a.m. start for the high school and middle school and the 8.50 start at the K-5 schools. But I will also encourage those that say they believe in the science um, of an 8.30 start time to get out and support a budget on June 12th because I, I firmly believe that if, if we can find um, funding and stop having multiple budget votes where we're cutting and cutting and cutting, that's not helping our kids, it's not helping our teachers, it's not helping our schools or our community, um, then that's what I think we need to do. So I, I too will support it, but I don't um, think this is the end for the start time discussion, frankly. Having said that, um, did Leanne, have Leanne and Jackie said they didn't come out. Um, all in favor? Five plus one. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Adjourned.